Welcome back to the second video in our transplantation series. Today we'll be talking about kidney transplants. Kidney transplants are one of the most effective treatments for people facing kidney failures and chronic kidney disease. According to the Kidney Foundation of Canada, in 2013, 4,500 Canadians were on the waiting list for transplants, and approximately 80% of those were waiting for a kidney. Kidney failure is caused by either physical damage or due to diseases, the most common being diabetes and high blood pressure. Studies have also shown that kidney transplants, in comparison to dialysis, will increase the patient's lifespan. So how do the patient and donor live with only one kidney each? Individuals that possess only one normal functioning kidney do not possess a higher incidence of kidney failure compared to those with two functional kidneys. Patients with only one functioning kidney must be more proactive in consulting with their nephrologist, a doctor that specializes in the physiology and diseases of the kidneys. Nephrologists suggest that those living with one kidney should avoid rigorous contact sports, and depending on the progression of the kidney, a modified diet may be sought out. There are three types of blood tests that potential donors must pass in order to be a successful match and reduce the risk of organ rejection. These tests assess for blood type, tissue type, and cross-matching. Blood type compatibility will determine if a donor is a suitable match for a recipient. There are four blood groups, type A, type B, type AB, and type O. The only universal donor that is compatible with all blood types is O. The next test involves antigens, which as discussed previously, are genetic markers found on tissue. Human leukocyte antigens, also known as HLA, are proteins found on the surface of white blood cells and other tissues. These antigens are how the body distinguishes self versus foreign tissue, which is important for organ acceptance. Finally, a cross-match blood test is taken multiple times leading up to the surgery to test for the recipient's immune response. There are three types of kidney transplants, deceased donor, living donor, and preemptive. Deceased donor transplants occur when a kidney is transferred from someone who has recently died to a recipient whose kidneys have failed. Leading up to surgery, the donated kidney must be stored on ice or be supplied with nutrients and oxygen to maintain its function. In living donor transplants, one kidney from a healthy donor is given to a recipient with two non-functional kidneys. This process offers additional benefits compared to a deceased donor kidney, as the kidney may come from a family member or friend, and therefore lead to shorter wait times and increased survival rates. A preemptive transplant takes place before requiring dialysis for end-stage kidney disease. This method lowers risk of kidney rejection and avoids treatment with dialysis. There are several risks and complications that can happen during or after kidney transplantation. For example, the recipient may be exposed to an infection, develop blood clots, or experience blockage of the ureter, which connects the new kidney to the bladder. When complications occur, it may lead to multiple hospitalizations post-surgery and longer recovery times for the recipient. Post-transplant, patients are monitored in the hospital for two to four nights. Recipients can return to work and other day-to-day -day activities within three to eight weeks after transplant. During this time, close monitoring is required to ensure the recipient is stable and their new kidney is functioning. Kidney transplant patients also need to remain on medication throughout their lifespan. These medications are called immunosuppressants and they reduce the body's reaction against the newly transplanted organ. It is important that the patient takes their medication every day since even missing one day may put them at risk for rejection. In addition to following a strict medication regime, kidney transplant patients need to maintain a healthy diet and regular exercise. This includes a low-salt diet, a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, lean meats, reduced fat dairy products, whole grains, and plenty of water. Although there are numerous steps in the process, kidney transplants significantly improve the quality of life for patients. Thank you for listening. Next up on our transplantation series is lung transplants.